Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? Joel Kaplan. How much was this box? Uh, let's see. Um, it's 98 Bowman Chrome refractor. Uh, not refractor. A baseball box. 98 Bowman Chrome. Uh, am I live? Can you all hear me? Joel. Leomar? Is that your name? Yo, comment if you guys can hear me. And if I'm live or not. Anthony, you're... J, J Sports Production. What's going on? Yo, guys, it's uh, 3.30 in the afternoon. I had some free time. Uh, the wife's out with my daughter doing uh, girl stuff. Uh, I t I'm taking a break from doing all my renovations on my house. And I wanted to do go live, guys. I've, I haven't been live for a while. And uh, I wanted to check in with, with everybody, see what's going on. Uh, the basketball is getting ready to start. Football. Uh, things are getting exciting right now. Uh, and I'm excited to come back in full steam, guys. Um, here probably by the by the end, the end of next week. Uh, and start busting out some videos, making more content, doing the, the more research. And uh, um, just getting into the... Uh, see how the market reacts to the games that are coming up. Uh Rick Jones, what's going on, Rick? Brian Sarabian, what's going on, guys? Thanks for hanging out with me going live today, doing some box breaks. I got two of these boxes that just sitting on my shelf, and I was like, you know what? Let's, let's break some. Um, I already broke a couple of these Bowman Chrome boxes. I don't know how many I broke, but uh, I'm looking for the refractors. Toa, what's going on? Wow, you guys, everybody's... What's everybody doing today? Is it too hot? Like, it's so hot right here in in Tennessee I can't even go outside to uh, check the mail it's so hot so you guys staying inside staying cool doing some research doing some uh, sports card shopping tons of dirt cheap stuff out there guys I'm still so blown away by all the stuff that's being overlooked Can you name the cheapest card you to invest in now? Oh, that's there's too many options. So yeah, guys, I'm gonna break some cards. We're gonna I'm gonna hang out with y'all, answer some questions, and uh, I really want to know what what you guys are picking up. What uh like I've been out a little bit. Um, I haven't really been looking at the market. So have you guys seen any uh, like huge uh, not disruptions, but uh, you know what I mean? Um, increases on any of these cards? Any cards going up right now that I I may have missed? Air conditioners on full blast. Yeah, man, mine's having a hard time keeping up. Acapulco Gold, what's going on, man? It's scorching in Miami. Wow, yeah, dude, I can only imagine how hot it is there. Lonnie Walker, man, I've heard a lot about Lonnie Walker. His stuff is dirt cheap. Michael Jordan's 89 Fleer stuff. Yeah, yeah, 89 Fleer. Also his hoops, I think. Uh, Michael Jordan, his first hoops card I, I was looking into a while ago. Steeler fan up in Ohio. We're at in Ohio, man. I, I lived in Ohio for a couple years. Um, I was actually born in Ohio. Toa says I'm stuck shopping at Walmart with the wife. <laughs> Do you got any baseball, basketball cards in that in that Walmart? I've been, I've been, man, I've been looking to go to uh, like WalMarts and Targets and low population cities around Knoxville just to see if they have anything. But definitely not in Knoxville. All the cards, man. There are some card collectors in Knoxville that they just, you know, get rid of all the cards as soon as they hit the shelves. I don't even look anymore. Every time I went to Walmart or Target, the first thing I would do is go to the sports cards and look at what they had. I don't even go there anymore because I know the shelves are empty. Deer and Fox prices are going up. I, uh, I believe that. Vegas. Man, I, I'm sure you guys are burning up out there in vegas all right let's see what we got here oh yeah check out this mat so hits i forget what it's hits um products on instagram he sent me this free break mat so i'm going to use it in this video and uh i guess we got the packs we got the base the inserts the rookies i'm more concerned about the refractor so the inserts over here i'm not i don't the penny sleeves and top loaders i'm gonna deal with that later youngstown ohio oh, okay I'm not really familiar with that. LeBron is hot, especially rookie cards. Yeah, LeBron's always been hot. 
You can't go wrong with the LeBron James cards. Mississippi, yeah, man, I bet everybody across the uh, the nation is burning up. The Project 2020 bubble popped. But yeah, man, that's, those tops. Pro I got some more, too. I got, man, I bought those Griffies. Really just put a, uh, they gave me a wake-up call on um, how much they were, they're selling for now. One guy said that they're selling for, like, five bucks free shipping those griffies which i only paid i think like 18 dollars a piece 17 because i bought them in bulk so i don't know i i think i bought like 20 of them but yeah those tops projects i'm out i'm out count me out i'm not buying any more i'm gonna hold on them a little bit longer i'm actually considering submitting those to psa because i've noticed the centering on some of those tops project baseball cards the centering is it's it's not um uh, consistent so I think they might in a PSA 10 case be more valuable and actually collectible because PSA will probably grade some PSA 9s maybe some 8s I don't know uh, I'm still to be determined on that greetings from Germany nice what time is it over in Germany right now yeah man I've been painting I built my deck I had to stain my deck, uh, my deck, my back, <laughs> the deck in my backyard. Um, I had to build it, uh, the stairs, the railings. I had to put the stain on it and the sealant. Uh, I chopped down pine trees in my backyard. Uh, took a, like five trips of truckloads to the dump. Uh, put a new floor in my bathroom, new toilets, new vanities. We're trying to sell this house and get a bigger one before baby number two gets here in October, the end of October, because we just need a bigger house. Um, we were going to do it initially January of next year, but we decided to go ahead and knock out those projects and try to get this house sold now. So we've been just really focused on um, doing the uh, last minute projects. I got to install insulation underneath my house still yet. Um, the rest of it, I've already installed a, lo a lot of it. But yeah, guys, I got uh, paint, uh, <laughs> you name it, all over. I'm like, I've had to wash my hands. They're still dirty. My nails are still filthy. Um, do I own an 86 Jordan? No, man, I wish. Um, I, I should have bought some, when they, like the PSA 2s and 3s and 4s, even the, PS, the, the PSA Authentic Jordans back when they were cheap. They're not cheap no more, though. Ninety three Gaudi Ty Cobb at a garage sale. Oh no, it, it it must be a reprint. It could it could be authentic though. The yeah, insulation is the worst, especially in the summertime. Oh, I was wait I was gonna hope in the way to do it in the wintertime. Chatsworth, California. I lived out in Chatsworth. It is the the, the uh, known for that. Nine thirty PM, wow. Yeah, guys, I never know when the best time to go live is. <laughs> so I'm just like, I, you know, uh, just squeeze it around my schedule. Fit it in. So let's start ripping these packs, and I'm going to keep answering the questions. Um, we're looking for, okay, guys, I'm looking for these international refractors, the golden anniversary refractors. Uh, super valuable guys, very hard to pull, or even just the base, like the Jeter Refractor or uh, Barry Bonds. Um, this is Series 2, so I'm not really sure which players I'm going to pull. I, o I opened one box, and uh, I pulled some Barry Bonds base. Glaber Torres, I've... I've been hearing a lot about Glaber Torres. Uh, are his cards cheap? Guys, you know, you, lo you know I like to buy cheap stuff. Like, that's why I never went in on, um, uh, well, that's Mike Trout, but his cards are up across the board. Or, uh, you know, Zion, because his cards out the gate were expensive. Even Ja Morant, you know. I wanted to buy some Ja Morant, but they're too expensive. I just look for other options. But I'm not sure. I haven't really looked into Glaber Torres. I just know that he does have a lot of uh, 
collectors out there. Is the National happening? I haven't really heard anything about the National. Mm, that's to be determined, I think. So let's put the base in the base. The mat. Uh, check out Hits on Instagram. Um, Hits Products. I think it's Hits Period Products. He sent this to me for free. He wanted me to check it out. It's super thick. Very thick. Um, I'm not sure how much they are, but... They're also nice for taking pictures. Um, if you, for, that's like a backdrop. You just gotta make sure to clean it. Oh boy, this pack is stubborn. What's best card you have personally opened? Uh, man, I don't really open cards anymore. But I can't really, I mean, when I was a kid, I opened cards. I pulled like a Whitey Ford autograph from, I forget what set it was. Uh, I pulled a Lawrence Taylor autograph from the game, like the 2002 uh, game. I forget what the set was. Here's a refractor, Kenny Rogers. I pulled some decent stuff, like from the old school sets, but nothing new, really. It's so expensive, the boxes. I was opening a lot of Optic Football when they came out, but I didn't really pull anything, like the retail stuff. Cody Bellinger, I, yeah, I picked up one of his cards, I think. His uh, uh, Bowman Chrome Refractor, I think it was. Second year Trouts, and I think Trouts cards are uh, going up. <laughs> Even like his, uh, like the Topps Heritage Miners, the stuff that nobody's really buying. A while ago, I did a video on lowest hanging, not lowest, uh, best Mike Trout, uh, most affordable Mike Trout cards to buy. Here's a, uh, this is an insert. I think this is an insert. Nice and center, Jackie Robinson. That's pretty decent. Good surface. I like that card. Too bad it wasn't, ref isn't a refractor though. So that's an insert. John Barnes, Refractor. Man, these guys, I'm telling you, these early Refractor cards, super tough to pull. A lot of you out there are overlooking them, underappreciating them. I did a, a, a live chat with my Patreons. I'm actually going to post that video later tonight. Talking about how rare the earlier Topps Chrome Refractors are. Check out the pop reports, guys, on the Michael Jordan 1996 Topps Chrome Refractor. There's like only a hundred in existence and then the kobe bryant only 400 it's just it's they're insanely rare and so i've been looking at that early stuff uh the prices have gone up but there's still in my opinion some low-hanging fruit and the boxes the prices the boxes are going up so you, i mean they're insane so check out that video later tonight on uh the lot, uh, like the, I don't know, it's like a basketball investment guide. Second year Lamar Jackson. His, his cards are expensive. There's a nice looking A-Rod. I like, I collected, was collecting these, the refractors. 30 LeBron, 2003 Chromes, PSA 10, five years ago for 2000. Not bad. Two, wait, 2003 his rookie? PSA 10s? Dang, dude. That was a nice investment. You got 30 of them for 2000 Yeah, I mean, I've guys, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I've been focusing on basketball right now just because it's so, it's like so dominant in the hobby, basketball cards. But I am excited to see the uh, the baseball games. Can you guys see these cards? I'm excited to see the baseball games, how they, like 60 games. Let's see here. I think it'll be interesting. This is 98 Bowman Chrome. I paid 50 bucks for this box. 
I might open up that my last box of the 1992 Topps Archives. Looking for some more Jordans. I submitted a bunch to PSA, like 11, I think. So I don't know. I might open that box. Depends on how long this one takes. Brady Anderson. Um, guys, I'm not the best at breaking. <laughs> That's not like my uh, my uh, my channel really is about breaking. I'm, uh, so I'm just doing this to hang out and see if we got any good cards. So. All I buy, refract. Yeah, dude, refractors from the 90s, you can't go wrong with. I mean, you can even look at the Bowman's Best. Bowman Chrome. Top, it doesn't have to be Topps Chrome. There are tons of options. Even the early Revolution stuff. Like, I think there's Revolution Basketball. I know there's Revolution Football. I like the Revolution Football. All right, guys, I'm trying to... Let's see here. Let me bring the camera down a little bit without help. Zoom in. All right. There we go. Maybe that's better. I, now I can't see the comments. Jeez, these cards are stuck. Daryl Strawberry. Mosaic football this fall. Frank Thomas. That's a nice Hall of Famer. Put this up there. I mean, I really like these earlier stuff. These 90s chromes. Bowman chrome. Topps chrome. This is what I essentially <laughs> was collecting first. And um, I got into the new stuff later on because I saw, like, the newer uh, basketball, baseball. But I was more focused on the old stuff uh, because that's just what I grew up collecting. But then I got into the new stuff. Which is expensive. <laughs> Is a 91 Skybox NBA box worth anything? 91 Skybox. Uh, I mean, at one time it wasn't, but it, that, that could have changed. You, you got to look at the, uh, the PSA 10 prices of those cards. What are they selling for? Like, you know, 91. So, obviously, Jordan... Uh, 91. Maybe Larry Bird? <laughs> uh, Akeem Olajuwon, for sure. You know, Charles Barkley, Dennis Rodman, maybe, if you're into Dennis Rodman. Carl Malone, Patrick Ewing. All the old, like, the, uh, the original, like, big men. I'm surprised John Stockton cards aren't going, aren't, aren't, like, up. Ours, his rookie cards might be up. I'm not sure. But he is, like, the number one all-time assisting John Stockton. What's this? Is that a refractor? Let's see. Paul O'Neill. Is 
It isn't worth buying boxes anymore, chasing, getting too expensive, better off buying the player. Yeah, I agree totally. Um, and that's essentially what I'm do what I did. Unless the boxes are cheap. Here's a nice looking refractor. Uh it's like a rookie reprint, I think. Carlos Delgado. I'm just gonna sleeve him up nice and centered. If that was a PSA ten, I don't know what the value would be. I don't know, thirty thirty bucks maybe. Barry Sanders. Uh yeah, man. Those Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith rookie cards are going up. Who I, who would have ever thought it? Running backs, too. I would probably I would go for Walter Payton, but I mean Emmett Smith and Barry Sanders, they're in the stats. as uh, best running backs of all time. Hey, Ripping for Ripkins. Appreciate it, man. The remodel is going very good. I'm actually able to breathe now. Mike Judd, <laughs> we've got a lot done in the last two weeks. I'm, ex I'm hoping to get it done before the games start, NBA games, because all I, want, all I want to do is watch the games. And they're like back-to-back -back games, too. Yeah, this box I pulled a lot out of, actually. Um, a lot more than the other box so far. So what kind of hut are you looking for with this break? Hut? Card? Hit? Oh, you mean hit. I'm looking for the uh, international refractors. And the... Um, or base refractors. Barry Bonds. Or the golden anniversary ones. Those are serial number out of 50, I believe. Those would be a huge hit. A golden anniversary refractor. David Robinson, Tim Duncan. Yeah, overlooked for sure. David Robinson, 90s big man. Um... I think the, the the admiral. He was in the navy, or not the navy. He was in the military. He was an officer. Yeah, and it, I mean buying boxes. There's no. Uh, I mean, if I I do enjoy opening them up, opening the boxes. However, as an an investment standpoint, um, it's not the best. Depending on the box and how much you paid for it. Uh, but I've opened so many boxes and pulled nothing, and and then I end up with all, all these cards. You know, I don't really want. I would much rather just buy the card. But absolutely right, dude. Breaking opening packs and breaking them. That's you know that's what sports cards are all about. Is opening the packs and pulling the player you want, and um, you know completing the sets, pulling big hits. I, def, I don't like how Panini's going digital. I mean, those digital cards, they don't make any sense. Man, this box was hot. I don't know why people... What, 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 what's the point of those digital cards? Do I bet on games? I don't bet on games. Yeah, LD, uh, LT, LaDainian Tomlinson, man. Yeah, dude. He was, uh, he was a beast. His cards are probably, I think, undervalued. Ben Gree, Prime Prospect. This is a rookie reprint. I think. Well, I got an A-Rod in the Frank Thomas base. Pack fresh. Possible PSA candidates. I like these base cards. Um, Hall of Fame base cards. The Chrome. Especially the Barry Bonds. I think I submitted some to PSA. Let's see here. All right. 
Jay Lamana. Oh, yeah, man. Thanks for joining. PS Team PSA Collector. Guys, check out my Patreon, too, if you guys want early access to videos. And I'm, I, 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 I'm, I still have to do my uh, live chat with my Patreons this week. Um, sorry, guys, if you're in here. I'm going to try to get it in tomorrow. I do weekly tra chats with my Patreons. So if you guys want to um, go check that out, you get early access to my videos and one-on-one -on -one chats with me. I've been doing one-on-one -on -one chats with individuals. Pretty sweet. I mean, I like that Jackie Robinson. That's probably the best card I pulled out of here. Like That Delgado is pretty cool. But this was definitely better than the other box I opened. Okay, so there's that break. Got a bunch of commons. I'm going to put that with the rest. And ah, this is knock out that basketball box. Try to pull some Jordans. Wax. All right. Muggsy Bogues. Yeah, man, he was in Space Jam. Whoa, okay, get rid of that box. A Goldschmidt rookie. Basketball or baseball cards? It depends, man. Honestly, I prefer... Uh, that's tough. <laughs> Do I like basketball cards better than baseball cards? Um, that's tough. I, I would say... I would say they're equal. Julius Irving rookie cards. Yep. Head. Yeah, they were. They've. They've. They've been expensive though. Last one, last box I bought from the 92 Tops Archives. The the Tops Archives gold has just went up, like out through the roof. I wish I bought more. I wish I bought more of those Stadium Club members only boxes too. They're selling for like 1200 bucks. I was paying 200 bucks for them. Cubby Pools. Why doesn't James Harden and Russell Westbrook get the hobby love? This, that's funny you ask because I was doing an uh, interview with DeMarco from Bleacher Report. He asked me that same exact question. And my response is, so was so James Harden, his rookie is 2009, I believe, right? Or 2010. And same with Westbrook, 2009. And that is when the tops, uh, that's when tops lost the NBA license and Panini gained it. And Panini was not making Prism and Select and Spectra and Optic in 2009, 2010, 2011 even. So I think because their rookie cards fall in that, you know, that gap of that, you know, the transfer of license, there's their, their rookie card. They're not um, very sought after because they're not very uh, appealing. They're not great. Like the options out there for those James Harden and Westbrook cards they're they're not as exciting as uh, the the new stuff. Um, however, that can change over time because if you look at the the, the earlier, uh, let's see, um, the '90s stuff. I mean, I don't know. It, it, I'm still it's that's still like up in the air uh, on, about their cards because they've already cemented themselves in the books as, um, uh, yeah, I guess Hall of Fame players. Now, their cards, they're not dirt cheap. Some are. I did a video on the Westbrook cards. I think the Bowman was dirt cheap. But his other stuff is, I mean, it's getting up there. Same with Paul George. I think Paul George rookie was 2011. Not much stuff out there for him, Paul George stuff.
Shaq rookies are blown up. Yep. Uh, I mean, I was I predicted that, you know, months ago. Like I was buying the Beam Team cards, his tops cards, his tops gold stuff are dirt cheap. I, I bought a Beam Team for fifty dollars, and that's why I bought those Stadium Club members only boxes because the Shaq Beam Team was in there. I bought two of those for two hundred dollars a piece. I have three of them at PSA getting graded right now. I have one coming back already. That's I'm I'm expecting any day. Um, I got a bunch of Topps Gold Shack rookies getting graded. So, I mean, he's honestly he's one of the top ten basketball players of all time, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinions. Shaquille O'Neal, go look at his stats, guys. <laughs> it's just. Yeah, dude, it's well overdue. Steph Curry, same same thing with Steph Curry. His, uh, well, his his tops. I think he has a tops Chrome card, and that's honestly the only Steph Curry card out there. I can't think of anything like there's like a Panini Prestige, I think, or some weird set. But Steph Curry's cards should be a lot more than what they are. I think. Yeah, there is some still some low hanging fruit out there for Sha Shaquille O'Neal. All right, guys, I'm trying to focus over here. Let's just do that. Larry Johnson, Shaq Beam Team. Yeah, yeah, if it comes back at ten, I submitted I think four overall, and um, I actually just sold a Michael Jordan. Beam Team PSA 8 for $200. But I got two more at PSA getting graded. And they're the members only, guys. <laughs> so they're not the base stadium. Well, I have like one base stadium club, but the other ones are members only, which are more valuable than the base ones. They have that watermark on them. I've talked about them in a lot of my videos. They, they get a more premium price. Because the populations are lower. Yeah, Shaq came out the gate as an all star. I think he made an all he, he was on the all star team every year of his career, as, except for, I think, maybe one. Yeah, and he's, an, he, he's on ESPN. Um, with Barkley, I think it's ESPN. He's in a Shaq's in a, the media, so he's just you know. There's going to be a lot more collectors out there wanting his card. Same thing with I think Shannon Sharp, guys. I think Shannon Sharp is one of the best tight ends ever, and he he's on the Skip and Bayless show. His cards, I, I looked into his cards a while ago. He doesn't have many rookie card like attractive rookie cards, but still, I think Shannon Sharp is. He's, de he's a Hall of Fame tight end. Um, definitely overlooked. I'm opening a 92 Tops Archives basketball box. Nice looking Akeem Olajuwon from the 84 design. That looks Jim Minty. Those are David Robinson. Yeah. You bought the Bird and Jordan. Yeah, man, those Panini stickers I predicted. I bought so many of those for dirt cheap. Cedric Ceballos, that means Michael Jordan is behind here. Um, if you guys don't know, it's now it's happened in a bunch of other box, boxes I opened. Uh, let's see if it's true in this box. Oh, I told you. Yeah, some guy told me that. He said, Michael Jordan always falls behind Cedric Ceballos. I didn't believe him. And then I was opening a box, and I I called it, or I said, and there it is. So there's a nice-looking Jordan, guys. Pack fresh. That looks gem minty. These PSA 10s were selling for $200. Um, so, and you could pull multiple per box. I've already submitted 11 to PSA. 
and super excited to get those back and see what uh, they get. So if you're opening one and you see a Ceballos, go ahead and, and uh, I think that's how you say his name. I think, yeah, Ceballos, I'm assuming. So yeah, dude, those Panini stickers, uh, I'm going to submit more to PSA. Uh, I got a bunch more I got to cut up, but in my next PSA submission, I'll have some uh, some more Jordans, Larry Birds. I, I, I made out like a, a cat and a, I don't know, but I made a lot of money on those. I bought the sticker albums for like two dollars a piece, and I was selling the Jordans for like 200, 250. Gem Mint tens, PSA nines were like ninety. Reggie Miller, I think Reggie Miller's another player that is underappreciated. Uh oh, the wife's home. She definitely earlier than I thought. Patrick Ewing, nice. I like Patrick Ewing cards. I'm gonna set him aside. Shannon Sharp starting lineup card is beautiful. Yeah, his I like his action pack too. Charles Barkley, look at that. I like I love those '84 designs, man. These are some of my favorite cards from the '90s, like like the base stuff, the base cards. Yeah, those stickers are big. Um, when you uh, pair them together, when you don't cut them, you put two two stickers in one slab. Did I sell you? A, it was a PSA ten Barrett Bird and Jordan. I think I, I kept one for myself. Um, I think I had five and I sold them all. And I kept one. I always do that. I like to. Keep at least one. So when I submit it to PSA, I like to submit doubles so I can sell some and always keep one. I also submitted a bunch of Shaquille O'Neal 93 uh, Scoring Kings as well. Man, I got a good I got a good one coming back. The Scoring Kings Shaq. Man, I, I bought I was going hard on his cards for the longest time and they're actually going up now. So but I'm gonna hold. I might sell a couple, but I think Shaq's definitely a great long-term investment just because of his 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 stats and uh, his impact on the game. And, you know, uh, Shaq's, like, he's, he's so funny, dude. I love watching those early, early games in the 90s of him playing, dude. If you guys haven't seen any of Shaq's games, uh, like his rookie, he was, he was, he, dude, he was hungry. Shaquille O'Neal was hungry. Trying to prove himself. And he was like trying to go, he was like bullying Jordan. Uh, everybody, dude, he, he didn't, he didn't take nothing from no one. <laughs> Put the cards away. Wife's gonna get upset. Yeah, I've definitely paid attention to keeping my inventory as low as possible. I don't I like having a you know a room full of you know base common cards. What? Come on. Come here. What? Come here. Come here. What are you doing? Go, Mommy. Who is that? Is that... Come Who is that? Can you say hi? Hi. Who is that? Say hi. Hi. I guess it is. Yeah, is that basketball? Yeah. Did you have fun with Nana and Moosh? Are you eating crackers? French fries. French fries? 
Okay. You're going to try to get another more stuff? Um, you want to go get a snack with Mommy? No, you don't need those. I love you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I know. All right, guys. Uh, I just say hi. She was pointing at this guy. <laughs> this guy always cracks me up. Derek Coleman. Dennis Rodman. One of the best rebounders. Um, yeah, that was my daughter. She's about to be two next month. She wants to Jordan. Yeah, she was grabbing for the stack, uh, stack I have. Yeah, I can see her getting into collecting. She definitely loves coming into the, the dad's office. And, like, it, she sneaks in here and starts <laughs> just grabbing everything. So I got to hide stuff. Or they'll be on the floor. Tatum rookie cards. Uh, man, they, they've just gone through the roof. They were so dirt cheap for the longest time. Now they're so expensive. I can't believe I wasn't picking up more Tatum cards. Yep, family first. Um, Craig, is that his name? Craig Elo? He looks like that Rocky from Rocky Horror Picture Show. Kendall Gill. from Karate Kid. So I got one Jordan so far. John Stockton, 84 design. Like it. Those are my favorite cards in this box, the 84 design cards. Muggsy Bogues. The Bullets. <laughs> A.C. Slater. AC Green's a Hall of Fame. I'm pretty sure. What do you do to get rid of base common cards? It all depends. Uh, it's tough, man, because... I mean, do you... I, I'll put them in a box and donate a lot of them. But if I get them in the mail as, like, freebies, and they're in tough condition, I just throw them away. Like, I got a bunch of... Uh, well, actually, I got these. This guy sent these as freebies, and I, I'm keeping these. The Larry Bird, the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Wilt Chamberlain, dude. These, these are all freebies. Jason Dominguez, and then this one. Um, I'm actually going to do... So those I keep, but if they're like... Uh, see cars I threw away? Let's see... Yeah, I just try to keep my inventory as low as possible. So I'll throw them away, or if I have a bunch of them, I'll donate them. Because kids, I mean, you don't they don't have to be When I was a kid, man, I condition did not I didn't I didn't care about condition of the card. I just wanted the card and I was trying to complete sets. Like I remember trying to complete the stadium club baseball sets. I mean, <laughs> they were essentially they're worthless, but it's still, you know, it's it's a good way to start out and you know get into the hobby. The Scotty Pippen collecting as a kid, and if you if you get him for cheap, that's the best way to do it. So put them in a box, donate them to Goodwill or your local thrift store. Definitely, I wouldn't try and sell them unless I mean. Because you're, you're probably going to pay, for, they're going to pay more for shipping than the actual cards. If you try to sell a bunch of, com, you know, commons. And it all depends on the set as well. Tatum possible Hall of Famer. Ah, it's too young, too early to tell, I think.
Another John Stockton. Yeah, it's too early to tell for to to, to see if Hall of Fame potential. Like you need at least I would say ten years of you know <laughs> consistent performance and success. But he's still, I mean, he's still young and he's still developing. He's focused. He's very patient. He's taking his time with uh, his development and, you know, he's slowly becoming a leader on the team, on his team. Yep, more archives. Vegas finds. What's going on, man? I'm just doing a, you know, a hangout, doing a live. I haven't done one in a while. Fat lever. And uh, I had these two boxes sitting around. I said, I got to break these. I pulled one Jordan so far. One Gem Minty Jordan. Yeah, I sent a bunch of these Jordans to PSA already. I think 11 total, maybe 13 or something. Hope I get a bunch of 10s. But I will be okay with 9s. This is one of Jordan's first Tops cards, guys. First Tops cards, 1992. There was no 1990, 1991 Tops. It's 1992 Tops Archives and 1992 Tops. 1992 Tops Gold? Yep. And that's why I've been I submitted a bunch of Tops Gold Jordan cards to PSA as well. Cuz this is first Tops cards. <laughs> Craig Elo's cards are good for a campfire. Damian Lillard, Lillard's cards are going up. Ah. Uh, yeah, I think if you look for some of his low-hanging fruit, I think he's a good he's a good buy. I've looked into his cards. Uh, but just because I think they're a good buy doesn't mean I pull the trigger on all these players because there's just so many out there. And I go by the price. If the prices are super low, like the Anthony Davis cards were super low when I looked into him, and I started just hoarding his his second-year cards. Uh, I didn't pull the trigger on his hoops rookie because I just didn't like it. However, I'm kicking myself for not buying those up because they've essentially doubled and tripled in value. But his second year cards, I have a bunch of PSA. <clears throat> I, I, <clears throat> his select, I was, I, I, you know, I saw how cheap they were, and I just bought them all. The second year select, uh, even like the 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 red, yellow, and the pinks, I was buying for like seven to fifteen bucks a piece. Anthony Davis. Hey guys, uh, sorry if I'm not. Um, comment on every, everybody's comment but I appreciate y'all, appreciate you all hanging out <clears throat> support my channel uh, I'm trying to you know let you all know that I, one guy said I was a, he thought I was abducted by aliens I'm not a, abducted by haven't been abducted I'm not in the hospital or nothing I'm still alive and kicking nice Akeem I'm just doing house renovations and um, I'm very close to being done so I'm gonna get back into creating content and uh Doing more research, doing some low hanging fruit stuff. Carl Malone. Uh oh. We got a Cedric Ceballos. You know what that means. You know what that means. Dame is a stud. Oh, yeah, Grace J.D., I saw that. That's that one guy. Well, I can't think of his name. He, he He's known for, like, eating hot dogs and drinking weird stuff. He has, like, 2 million subs. He pulled an 86 Jordan. He accidentally spit on it, submitted it to PSA. It came back like a PSA 6, I think, or 7. 
and then he don't or he gave it away to one of his sub subscribers. So Cedric Cedric Ceballos, guys, Jordan's gonna be up behind here, right? Boom, nice looking gem minty Jordan. Let's see, let's, let's get the corners. What do the corners look like? Pretty good, pretty good. The back is looking good. That's a PSA candidate for sure. Man, that's just an awesome, awesome Michael Jordan card. He was drafted in 84. This should be, if Tops were making basketball cards in 84, this would be his true rookie card because he wasn't drafted in 86. It's just his first uh, basketball card printed, so it's considered his rookie card because there are no 84 car, basketball cards, which is a bummer. That's a lot. 86 is considered rookie cards for a lot of players that weren't even drafted in 86. I think like Akeem Olajuwon and um, Charles Barkley, their rookie cards are 86 Fleer, but they're not. They weren't drafted in 86. That's funny how that the sports cards, the, the they don't even like you know acknowledge that. I, I do love the 86 Fleer Jordan, though. Um, it's very tough to beat. Uh, do I like that better than this one? I don't know. That's a tough call. I, the 86 Fleer with, the, with those red borders, that's, you know, it's very, that's iconic. That entire set as a whole is just going to go up in value. And that's a great investment. Uh, <laughs> I looked into buying some, but, man, they're expensive. Even for, like, the co common cards. Now, the PSA 9s. It came back a PSA 4? Oh, wow. I thought it was a lot higher. 1984 Star. I know. That's it's that's an interesting set. PSA won't grade those cards anymore. Just because of all the fakes, the counterfeits out there. BGS will, though. That will forever be a debate. Which Michael Jordan card is more valuable? The 1984 Star, his true rookie card, or the 1986 Fleer? Because Star is not recognized as a, a licensed distributor, I think. That's one of the reasons PSA won't grade him anymore. There's some kind of legal issue with that, with that company. <laughs> not having like the license to do it. So... A lot of guys, collectors, kind of, um, you know, disregard the 84 star set. Any star cards, really. Art. Thanks, man. I appreciate that, Art. Hands down. Uh, baseball, basketball. Patrick Ewing. There are no Larry Bird cards in here. I'm not sure why. Here's a nice Akeem. So I got two Jordans so far. That's pretty good. Two Jim Minty Jordans. Craig E. Lowe. Charles Barkley lost a lot of money gambling. Did he? I thought that was... Um, I think a lot of professional athletes did, actually. Lost a lot of money, a lot, a lot of their money, because of bad management and uh, you know other <laughs> outside influences. Which luckily the newer players I think have learned from all that to get financial managers of their money. Scotty Pippen, 87 tops, although it doesn't look like it. Barry Bonds, through the roof, rookie cards. I stopped buying those because they're press, past my price point. The 85 Nike promo Jordan rookie, yep. I did a, uh, 
most valuable Michael Jordan cards from the 80s video a long time ago, and that was in it. There's a bunch of Michael Jordan cards. Actually, that's not even considered a card. It's I don't, I don't, a collectible, I guess, because it's a promo. But, guys, all that early Michael Jordan stuff, it's just going up, up, up. A lot of it's hard to find in general. There's like this little poster sticker that they had for the Sports Illustrated um, bin. It's gone. It, it's valuable because they're rare. The uh, the stickers, the Jewel, the 1985 Jewel Prism sticker. Awesome card. I almost pulled the trigger on a. a, a Korean Abdul Jabbar. I wish I did, but it's like a PSA four. That nineteen eighty five Jewel Prism set, man. That's all. That's 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 a sticker that you used to find in, in in a vending machine, I think. But still, awesome, awesome card. If you guys come across any, go look them up. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, early like the, some of the earliest Prism cards stickers. I came up with Mafia guys. RJ Barrett. I've been looking into him a little bit. His cards are cheap. He's got a, he's got some decent upside. There's a lot of players out there, guys, that dirt cheap. And you just never know. I mean, I need to see some significant playing time, though. From a player. Although I've been buying up Marvin Bagley and he really doesn't have some significant playing time. I just, you know, that's just a, you know, a gut feeling. And sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. I like buying the player. Sometimes I'll buy players if they're not even, you know, performing that well. Because I, see, I, I can see potential maybe in a couple of years. Especially if they're young. If they're young on a young team... I like to go ahead and uh, pick some up while they're cheap. But I think like the, the hobby as a whole across the board, basketball cards especially, are just going going up. I mean, some cards higher than others, but I think as a whole, it's going up. And I think it's only going to get bigger. I think once other people, like big time celebrities or influencers catch on and start doing it and promoting it, they're going to get more and more people into the hobby. And once you're in, you're in, you know, <laughs> once you're in you, and you get addicted, you're, you're in. It's hard to, uh, you know, just say, uh, I'm out. I don't want to collect anymore. Especially if you're a sports guy. If you like watching sports and you're addicted you know, to, to sports or a team. And you get into card collecting. You see the value. You're a lifer. I don't see me ever you know, not wanting to collect cards anymore. It's just you know, it's, it's a passion I've, I've had for as long as I remember as a kid. Some of my earliest memories are... Going through baseball cards, basketball cards, going through the Beckett price guides, writing down how much they're worth, like twenty-five cents up to like a dollar fifty. I thought a dollar fifty was a lot, but I, you know, I was just I was as obsessed with sports cards now as I, when I was a kid. I grew out of it a little bit in high school, you know, like a lot of us did. We we, we got into other things, girls, you know, parties and whatever. And then um, I got back into, uh, I got married, and then I started focusing on the things that I like doing, I love doing. And I started buying the, uh, I started back in football cards, the 2016 Optic. And I haven't looked back. There we go, look at all these base cards. These are donation, this is donation pile. I try to keep them, you know, as nice as possible. I'm not going to sleeve them all up or anything, but donate them. My wife goes to Karma a lot, uh, Goodwill here, and uh, I'll just, this will be in the pile. Some kid will get it. Maybe they'll try and sell it for like five bucks. 
make big money because they don't know. Most people don't know what the value of cards are. They're going to look through here and be like, maybe there's a Jordan in there. Put $10 on it. When in reality, it's probably worth maybe two. Not many. Because I took all the good cards. So two Jordans. Jim Mint Jordans. Some Hakeem Olajuwans. Some Barkley. John Stockton. Patrick Ewing. Actually, three. Two. One box, I pulled four. And... Uh, some I only pulled one, but I at least I at least pulled one Jordan out of each box I opened. I opened like I don't even know eight. So there it is. No more boxes. I need to look into buying more. There are a lot of options out there for dirt cheap stuff. Uh, stadium club guys, early stadium club like ninety four, ninety five, ninety six, basketball stadium club. There's lots of potential in those. What else? Revolution. Football. I think there's like two years of Revolution Basketball. Skybox. Um, like the later Skybox years. Intense. I think there's a cheap stuff out there. Some of it's expensive though because everybody knows that the Jordans are in there. And they want those Jordan Skybox, you know, uh, inserts. Yep, the Shaq rookie card is not in the the, the, the the base tops archives. It's only found in the tops gold archives box. Which is a card, a Shaq rookie to consider picking up. I mean, they've gone up a little bit, but not as much as the, uh, the tops gold. Man, the tops gold is just when I look at cards that <laughs> like the Barry Bonds rookie 87 tops Tiffany and the uh, the 92 tops gold Shaquille O'Neal rookie cards what they're selling for now and I was talking about you know months ago man I just get like my heart sinks that I didn't buy more and you know capitalize on the market because it's you know I I thought that I, I had a feeling that they were going to go up and they did. And I should have bought more, but I didn't. Emmett Smith, his 1990 stuff is go, is going up. And when I see the prices, I'm like, man, you know, I could have picked up a hoard of those and made a ton of money and invested it in other stuff or just hold on to it. So let's see, guys, how long have I been doing this? What time is it? Wow, an hour, only an hour? 167 people in here. 51 likes. Nice, guys. Appreciate you all supporting the channel. Let's see here. Main camera. 1990-91 Skybox is super cheap. I haven't looked into that set. Basketball, Patrick Ir uh, Irving. Julius Irving, Patrick Irving. <laughs> the Pippin in the Goodwill pile. Yeah. I'm not really a big Pippin fan. I might, I, you know, I might put some of those cards back in there and don't, in the donation pile. I definitely am going to put the Bowman Chrome in there. Um, a Skybox Thunder and Lightning, Jordan Pippin. I know one card inside and the other. Pro set, yeah, 1990 Pro set, man, that was way overprinted. Uh, but those Gem Mint 10, Emmett Smiths, that they're they're hard to find in Gem Mint 10. Yeah, Derek Jeter cards are, man. I have I've been picking up his cards like I went pretty heavy on Derek Jeter cards. His 1995 finest, 1996 finest, the 96 tops Chrome. Um, anything Derek Jeter because he is cemented in history as one of the best shortstops of all time. Uh, he has like five rings, um, five championships. Same with A-Rod. Now, A-Rod has that allegation, or not allegation, but he has <laughs> that suspension from PEDs. 
But look at his stats, guys. Alex Rodriguez is a beast. Was a beast. Any replies on Jordan Error? Jordan Error card? Penny Hardaway rookie cards? No. Uh, he, had, he had those injuries. Uh... He, he was a bust. Not a bust, but you know what I mean. His, his stock essentially fell through because of his injuries. Um, now, he's a coach for, I forget who it was, but he's, he's like, a, he's like a, an awesome coach. But I don't see much value going up. I don't see the stock, Penny Hardaway stock going up. Kyle Ripken Jr., yeah. He's he's under underrated. Legendary baseball player. Pokemon, man. Um, I fell out of Pokemon. But I'm I, I'm I'm trying to get back into it because I do like collecting Pokemon cards, guys. I'm a collector and Pokemon cards uh, if you buy, when buying the right ones and you know which ones to look for, it's it's fun to do and there's a huge investment potential in Pokemon cards. Alonzo Morning, same thing. I don't see much value in his stuff. There's tons of guys out there, tons of players that you know you would think would be have value. Value, but you, there's there's so many different factors that you know take place. Um, and you know, just because they have killer stats, that doesn't necessarily mean that their their rookie cards or their basketball cards are going to have value. It's it's just weird. It's weird how the hobby works. And it's guys, you got to remember the hobby is still young. Like this is the birth essentially. Well, I guess the rebirth, the resurrection of the hobby. Like, okay, it was born uh like in the 50s, uh baseball and then basketball, you know, in the late 70s, early 80s, it died off, it came back in the 90s. Uh football like early 60s so that was the first go around and now we're in the second boom okay so this is the second birth so many new guys are getting into the hobby uh that really weren't in it before they're doing it as you know like an investment um they see the potential they've seen the both the, the potential the return on investments on a lot of these cards so they're uh it's so unpredictable where the market's going to go there's also, you know, veteran play, uh, veteran um, collectors in the hobby who have been doing it their entire life, uh, the older guys. However, that doesn't mean that they're buying the right cards. They could be buying the wrong cards. It's nobody knows. So uh, it's it's all up in the air. Um, Troy Aikman, yeah, man, like you, you would think that Troy Aikman cards are are expensive, right? But they're really not. Uh, Dan Dan Marino, um, so many players from the '90s. John Elway, uh, Brett Favre cards are kind of, you know, up there. He's like one of the most collected players, quarterbacks from the '90s. Brett Favre. But the other guys, not much. Um, like I was talking about earlier, Shannon Sharp, tight ends. Like I'm, th- I'm trying to think outside the box. Like what's the? What, since so many collectors are entering the hobby. And they don't, nobody really knows the future. Nobody knows the future. So uh, like 20 years from now, I'm predicting, or 10 or five or one year, where's the market going to go? Are, are people going to start collecting tight ends, uh, wide receivers again, uh, running backs? Right now, football cards is dominated by quarterbacks. Um, but because there's so many people entering the hobby, there's so much money coming into the hobby. A lot of these cards are going to be eventually uh, um, no longer affordable. So collectors are going to have to look for other uh, angles. And that's why I, I like picking up the PSA 9 cards. Because across the board, 
the hobby, the, the market's going up. So the PSA 9s are going to be the next best thing to the PSA 10s because the PSA 10s are going to be out of reach for most people because all the money, the big time investors, the uh, the collectors who are doing this for fun and, you know, as an investment as well. And it's just crazy, guys. It's crazy to see where the, where the hobby is, uh, how, how fast it grew and where we're at. Uh, phase, we're like in quarter, I'm going to say quarter two of the hobby. Who knows where it's going to go? Um, it's definitely like it's it's addicting and it's fun. And I go to look at my cards, what they're worth now. And I'm just blown away every time. I'm like, I can't believe they're selling for that much right now. Uh, you know, stuff like the Lucas, the, the Shacks, the uh, uh, I don't even know. Some Patrick Mahomes. The Giannis guys, the Giannis second year cards are so insane. I paid 75 bucks for that select PSA 10, like, I don't know, three months ago. And one just sold at auction for like $400. I bought a bunch of his second year select. Uh, it's just crazy, guys. It's so it's so crazy. Um, all right, guys. Uh, see you later, Grace. JD, man. Um, thanks for all. Thanks for hanging out, guys. And... Uh, Breaking some box with me. I'm, I'm looking forward to do more of these videos. How long have I been collecting? Man, I've been collecting ever since I was a kid, ever since I can remember. I, now, I've been in and out of the hobby uh, because, of you know, life gets in the way and stuff, but I've been collecting my whole life. I donate commons to the local Goodwill, Goodwills, or even hospitals. Hospitals, I think, will take them. 1990 where do i find good deals on 1940s baseball cards or earlier oh yeah man it's tough I, a lot of stuff i don't like buying if they're raw and ungraded because it's th th there's so many reprints out there if i'm buying earlier baseball cards I, they, they have to be in a psa case junk wax autographs yeah dude i think those are definitely over uh, underappreciated i picked up some a uh, frank thomas 1990 his, his 1990 tops rookie card uh, on card autograph now guys if you're going to go that route if you want to start collecting autographs make sure they're psa authenticated or bgs authenticated um don't buy them like from the seller saying that he got it in person himself because you know that's not always the case there's so many fake forged autographs out there so my suggestion is make sure that they're in a psa authenticated case or beckett okay but they're cheap Yep, guys, thanks for hanging out. Y'all have a great weekend, too. I appreciate all the support, guys, all the feedback. 69 likes. Yep, I'm very, very happy to be back. I got another video coming out tonight. It's about just some uh, questions I get a lot um, that my pa and my patrons asked me, so I'm, I made a video out of it. I'll, I also have a – I started my podcast, so if you guys like listening to the podcast, check me out, a PSA Collector. Um, I'm going to be doing those more and more often as well. I'm trying to tap into the podcast arena. And I've got some low-hanging fruit ideas. Lots of low-hanging fruit ideas coming uh, to mind. And uh, excited to knock one out here soon. Uh, tons of other video guys, ideas, guys. Uh, so... Thank you all for hanging out. Thanks for supporting the channel. I'll see y'all. See you guys next time, okay? I'm not sure when, but just keep your eyes open for my random live streams. See you guys. Thanks for watching.